All right, alrighty. So welcome to part two of the ultimate guide to trading options profitably, even if you're just starting out. So if you haven't already watched part one, please go ahead and watch that first. I'll put the link in the description as well at the top right hand corner of this video. So go ahead and watch that first if you haven't. So let's do a very quick recap of part one, right? So in part one, we learned about the fundamentals of options. We learned about puts and call options. We learned about the moneyness, what this all means in the money, at the money, as well as out of the money. And then we also learned about intrinsic and extrinsic value, right? And also we learned about the Greeks. While there are many Greeks, I only shared with you the four important ones that I think that you really need to know. And more importantly, we also learned about the expected move. So the expected move is also the market's expected range over a given period. So theoretically, the market should stay within the expected move 68% of the time. But as we learned, historically, it has actually stayed within this range longer than what it actually suggests. So it actually stays within the expected move 71 to 85% of the time. So that means that the historical statistics show that the implied volatility is overstated most of the time compared to the realized volatility and that's why we have an edge as option sellers. Now, in this part 2 of this video, we're going to dive deeper into this. We're also going to examine the difference between selling premium and buying premium at the same time. We're also going to get you started on placing your first profitable trade as an option seller and I'll go through with you the three option strategies that are safe for you to get started. All right, so the next question we want to ask after we learn about expected move is whether is the expected move always larger than the realized move, right? And the answer is that it's actually not, right? So there are different time frames. So as you can see, this is a study done on the SPY, which is the index ETF since 1993. So this is a pretty statistically significant kind of study because it's about 20 to 30 years, right? So as you can see, if you take the days, the range of seven days to 30 days, you'll notice that the expected move is actually not larger than the realized move, right? Because we have already learned that the way we can be having an edge, the way we can have an edge is when we are trading the expected move because most of the time it stays within there compared to what the theoretical, uh, the theory suggests and then we're getting more premium than we should. But in this case, it shows that the expected move is actually lesser than the realized move. So in this case, there is no edge. In fact, you're gonna lose money if you're gonna be trading this expected move because most of the time, the realized move is more than what the expected move. So where is it where the expected move is larger than the realized move. So as you can see, it's only when it reaches 45 days, right? So at 45 days onwards, you notice that the average expected move is larger than the average realized move and it's larger by 0.5%. So this is the beginning of our edge, right? So this is the beginning of where the realized move actually start to be smaller than the expected move. And if you go further out in time, you can see 60 days and 90 days, you will notice that the discrepancy between the expected move and the realized move becomes even larger, right? In 60 days, you can see that the expected move is bigger than the realized move by 1.4%. All right, let's compare this. This is 1.4%. This is 0.5%. And then this down here in 90 days is 2%. So it means to say that as we go further out in time, there is an even bigger edge if we were to trade the expected move. But does this mean that we want to trade options that are 90 days, 180 days out or even further? Well, the answer is no. And the reason is because we have to take uh, into account of theta as well in terms of the premium that we actually earn per day. Because remember, as we have learned in part one, theta is where it the time decay, right? It will start to decay any extrinsic value that is in the option. So if you were to go all the way out to 90 days and even 180 days, then the time decay, the theta will not be as much, will not be as quick, right? You want the decay to be really quick so that you can quickly earn this uh, extrinsic value of the option, earn the premiums as much of it as possible and then move on to the next trade. But if you were to choose something that's very far out, then guess what? It's like eating ice cream during winter. Right, the ice cream is not really going to melt that much because the surrounding is very cold. But if you were to eat the ice cream during a very hot summer day, 
then the ice cream is really going to melt and that's the ideal environment which we want to trade our options as well and this ideal environment would then be around the 45 to 60 days marks and this gives us the basis of where we are going to choose our options time frame so there are many days to expiration so this is the reason why we want to ideally choose around 45 to 60 days because this is the sweet spot right the sweet spot whereby the realized move is lesser than the expected move and then at the same time we have very good theta decay that gives us pretty good premiums as well all right next let's talk about selling premium versus buying premium so first of all selling premium will always have a higher probability of profit than buying premium so let's examine two different strategies down here that are both bullish right so you have the short put spread which is a premium selling strategy you receive a premium upfront whereas for the long call spread you have to pay a debit right you have to pay a premium to enter into this trade so right off the bat you will notice that the probability of profit the win rate is very different right for the short put spread you have an 80 percent chance of winning right almost 80 percent whereas for long call spread it is 50 percent and for the long call spread this is at best the highest win rate that you can get right you know some people even want to go for the out of the money call spread because they think that it is much cheaper right it is indeed much cheaper and then you also can get a better risk to reward whereby maybe you risk a dollar to make maybe two dollars or even three dollars but the problem with that is that you have a very low probability of win right your win rate is going to be very low so in order for you to win on your long call spread in the long term you have to be really right on your direction which means to say you need to be able to know how to read the charts or find the turning points on the chart and then from there place the long call spread in hopes that the market will go up but whereas for the short put spread you don't really have that pressure because it's a little bit more forgiving right it's much more for forgiving because you can see this is where the current market price is now the market if it goes up you will make money and even though it stays still or even goes down to just above this strike price you can still be in profit so one of the most difficult things to do when you're trading uh, the market in general is to pick a direction right because in any given day the market can go up or down so if you're going to pick a direction and if you're going to be right in your direction most of the time then it might be better for you to just go outright to buy the stock right just trade the stocks outright you'll be able to get a better return compared to if you were to do the long call spread and you have to wait for time passes before you can actually achieve the maximum profit now if you're someone that don't really want the stress and the pressure to always pick the right direction then the short put spread will always be a better choice because again remember when we trade the expected move what we know is that it will stay within the expected move longer than it actually should so one of the things that everybody wants when it comes to trading is to have a consistent income and in order for you to have a consistent income you need to have a strategy that have a high win rate right so if you're going to have a 50 percent win rate then you can suffer what is called a losing streak so this is the next important concept for you to understand you see lower probability trades have a longer losing streak compared to higher probability trades right so let's just examine the 50 percent win rate strategy so this is the debit spread right so if you will take a look at the probability of the consecutive law, uh, losing trades so this is done within a hundred trade sequence you will see that it is very possible for you to get four losers at a time right in fact if you will go all the way to 10 losers at a time in a sequence you're right you have a losing streak of 10 losers in a row there is a roughly 10 percent chance right nine percent chance that you can actually have 10 losers in a row so tell me what does this actually do to your psychology Right, imagine you place the trade and you looking at the charts and you place the long trades and suddenly you start to realize six losses in a row or not even say six losses you start to realize four losses in a row now is this going to start to doubt your ability is this going to start to doubt you placing the next trade and you're going to get afraid well most likely so right because us humans always want to win and when we start to have feedback or rather feedback where we keep losing this is going to start to deter us right we're going to start to doubt we're going to start to be afraid and it may even reach a point where you know you start to get analysis paralysis and you start to try and get as many evidence to think that the market is going to go up before you pull the trigger and that may actually miss you some trades where you actually 
goes in your favor, right? So this is one of the problems when it comes to trading a 50% kind of win rate strategy. Now, no doubt that it can be profitable in the long run, right? Even though it can be profitable in the long run, you may not reach a point whereby you are confident enough in a strategy to actually place the trades, right? As you can see down here, imagine you have seven lo losses in a row. For you to place the eighth trade, the next trade is going to be so difficult now because you have already started to see a very big drawdown in your account and you're afraid that the next one will be a loss. Now, let's compare the strategy whereby there's an 80% win rate. So if you notice, for the 80% win rate, there is only a 100% chance of a one losing streak, right? Losing streak one time in a row and then 98% uh, chance for two losers in a row. But as it gets uh, out there, right, roughly around five losing trades, six losing trades, the percentage gets even lesser and lesser. So what it does down here is that it really builds your confidence. Now imagine both trading systems or rather both trading strategies give you the same results at the end of the day, same profits at the end of the day. Which would you choose to trade? Would you rather choose this one where it is less bumpy and gives you a more confident journey or rather a journey whereby you know you feel much more confident to place the trades compared to the 50% win rate strategy where you can have like four, five, even six losses in a row. So obviously you would choose the 80% win rate, right? So if two paths lead you to the same profitable outcome, which path would you choose? Would you choose the one where it is so volatile, right? You see you can have such high points and then all the way back down again and all the way back up again. Or would you rather have a rather smooth ride all the way to the same profit line? So obviously we would want to go for strategy number two. So that's where selling premium comes in because when you sell premium and you trade the expected move, then you will be able to have a much smoother ride at the end of the day. So this brings us to the next important topic, which is achieving true probability. So let me ask you a question. Let's say if you flip an unbiased coin 10 times, right? Is it possible to get seven heads and three tails? Well, it's definitely possible, right? So if you were to flip the coin and you get seven heads and three tails, will you say that this coin is unfair? Well, most likely not. You most likely would just say that because you only flip the coin 10 times. There's just not enough flips for you to get to the probability of 50% because we all know that an unbiased coin is 50%. So what if you flip the unbiased coin a thousand times? Is it possible to get 7,000 heads and 3,000 tails? Well, somebody have actually did a study on this and there are actually numerous studies done on this. You can go ahead uh, to Google this search results for yourself. But as you can see, that the probability of hits is much higher when there are very few flips involved, right? So let's say if you have only 10 flips, you can see that the probability could even be like 80%. That means you get eight hits and two tails. Or even at this point of time, maybe you, you, you flip it like 20 times. Maybe it will be seven hits or six heads and four tails, but that does not mean that this coin is an unbiased coin. So the most important thing is you can see that as the number increases, you will see that the probability goes down to the true probability. This is a very important concept to understand because just as when we are trading our strategy, although you may have a 70% win rate strategy, as we have seen in the table, it is possible for you to have quite a number of losing streaks, right? Even 80%. So let's say if you trade an 80% strategy and then out of five trades, you have three in a row losses and then two winners, will you suddenly look at the strategy and say that, hey, this strategy doesn't work, right? Most likely not because, and you shouldn't, because you haven't achieved the true probability yet. That means you do not have a large enough sample size. So this is another study that has been done based on a 80% win rate strategy. So you can see that at the start, when you have very few occurrences, right? Very few trades that you make, you can see that the win rate really fluctuates a lot, right? You can go as high as almost 100% which may make you have a false belief that, wow, this system never loses, which is not true. And it can go as low as 55%, which may make you start to doubt this strategy. But then you notice that as 
more occurrences start to happen as there are many many more trades you can start to see it starts to go down to the mean probability which is roughly around 80 percent so here's the key to understand when you start trading you want to have this in mind right you do not want to put on 10 trades and then just based on that say that this strategy works or doesn't work you want to clock as many trades as possible so when the number of trades gets increased over time that's when you will start to really realize the true probability of your trading strategy so you might ask what is a good number of occurrences or well, a good number of occurrences will be something around 200 you want a roughly 200 trades but more will be better but of course that also doesn't mean that you want to force trades right you do not want to force trades where you try and put 200 in a single day or even 200 in a single month right you want to spread them over time especially you also want to make sure you manage your money well and that leads us to the next important topic which is on capital allocation because you may have a winning strategy but if you do not know how to allocate your capital properly then guess what you could get wiped out when there are losing streaks especially on times you know like when there is the pandemic crash or during the 2008 financial crash so during these times this is where your capital allocation really plays a big part so because it's possible to run into losing streaks and occasionally hit the outlier losses which is outside of the expected move it is important position size your trades properly right so the rule of thumb is that you only risk roughly one to five percent of your capital per trade this is more if you have a big account roughly around a hundred thousand or more or at most seven percent per trade if you have a small account so maybe fifty thousand or lesser or twenty five thousand dollars or lesser and you do not want to risk more than fifty percent of your capital at any one time so for example if you have five percent trade per trade you risk five percent per trade then at most you want to have total 10 open trades at one time if you have 10 open trade at one time and you see another signal for you to place 11th trade then this is where you do not want to get into that trade right and so here's an example so on a twenty thousand dollars account so let's say your risk per trade will be from two hundred dollars to a thousand dollars and then no more than 10,000 allocated at any one time. And as your account increases and decreases, the percentage risk will be adjusted accordingly. So if you're risking 5% per trade, then you can only have at most 10 positions on any one time, which we have already talked about. Now you might be wondering why you want to keep 50% of your capital. So this is important to leave at keep 50% uh, capital free so you can always fight back when you suffer a losing streak or a large outlier loss if you were to put a hundred percent of your capital at risk then one big move could just easily wipe out your whole account which is not what you want all right so how to get started selling premium by the way if this video has been helpful so far i'd appreciate if you hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to my channel so i can create more videos like this for you in the future okay back to the video so if you're just starting out or you're very new to options then there are three option strategies that you just need to know at the start to get started Right, so the very first strategy is what you call the bull put spread. So the bull put spread is a neutral to bullish view kind of a strategy. This is what you want to do. The mechanics is this. So you want to choose the closest to 45 to 60 DTE and we have already explained why. Then your short put strike will be somewhere 15 to 30 deltas. So this will ensure that you have at least a 70% win rate. And then your long put spread for a start, you want to put roughly about 5 to 10 dollars away. Right, so for example, if you were to take a look at this uh, chart down here, you want to place the put option, the short strike, out of the money, right? Basically at around 15 to 30 deltas, and then you buy another put option below that for the out of the money to cap your maximum risk. So this way, even though if the market crashes all the way to zero, this is the most that you can lose, which is the spread. And at the start, I would just suggest to go roughly five to ten dollars to get your feet wet. And as you get better, you can start to increase this width because studies have shown that if you have increased width for your spreads, then you will be much more profitable, right? So that is a talk for another day where I'll go into probably I'll create a, another video on that. But for now, this is what you need to understand when it comes to the bull put spread. So next is the opposite. So previously we have the bull put spread, which is the neutral to bullish view. Well, now we have the bear call spread, which is a neutral to bearish view, right? So if you think that the market is going to go down, then this is where you want to put on the bear call spread. So same thing, 
we want to have the option strike price or rather the option days to expiration 45 to 60 days and then the short call strike again 15 to 30 delta that ensures a 70% win rate and then the long call strike which is 5 to 10 dollars away and finally the third option strategy is that what if you know, you have no view on the market, you have no idea how to read charts, or you're not sure whether it's going up or down, then guess what? You can just go with a neutral strategy, which is called the iron condor. So remember, the expected move has a range, an upper range and a lower range. So what this iron condor does is actually trading the expected range. That means it expects that the market will stay within this range uh, by expiration, right? So for this, what you want to do is you want to choose again the closest uh, to 45 to 60 days to expiration and this time your short strikes is anywhere from 15 to 20 deltas right you don't want it to be 30 deltas unlike the bear call or the bull put because if you were to do 30 deltas on one side and then 30 deltas on the other side then guess what you have really squeezed the range to be so tight whereby it's only going to be a 40% win rate, right? Because remember, Delta also gives us the rough probability of win. So if you have one side that's 30%, the other side is 30%, then guess what? The only uh, range that you've left in the middle is 40%, which is not exactly what you consider a high probability trade. So for this, we want 15 to 20 deltas. And again, at the start, you want to have the long strikes roughly 5 to $10 away. So this is the best way for you to get your feet wet to trade the expected range. Okay, so how do you know when to put which strategy? So this is one of the biggest questions that a lot of people ask when they first get started. So I'm going to give you a simple way just to get started. Now, this is not the end all and be all of defining, you know, which is the best way to put a strategy, but it gives you a start and a pretty simple way as well. So it will be to use the stochastic oscillator, right? So this is provided on most trading platforms on all charts. In fact, so all you have to do is plot this stochastic oscillator, and then you just want to read what the market conditions are, right? So basically the stochastic oscillator will tell you whether the market is overbought or oversold or neither, right? So how you want to use this indicator to place your trades is basically if the market is in an oversold region, right? So basically it's below this line down here, then you want to only place bull put spread because both the time we are contrarian traders, right? If the market is oversold, we want to play a neutral to bullish strategy so this way even though if the market right wants to go down it doesn't necessarily go much further down because we already know the market is pretty oversold now of course there are times where it can still go much further but it's better than when you place a boo boo spread when it's overbought right where you know the market is going to come down so when the market is oversold that's when you can choose to place the boo put spread and when the market is overbought right it's, the stochastics is showing an overbought condition then you can place the bear call spread and if the market is somewhere in the middle right neither oversold or overbought then you can choose to place the iron condor okay so Let's get started placing your first profitable trade. And by the way, don't place it on the live account if you have never traded options before, right? Just go ahead and try it out for yourself on a demo account. So step number one, that is to trade index ETFs, right? So as a start, I want you to only trade the index ETFs instead of stocks because we already know that stocks are much more volatile, right? You have earnings and then you have those kind of news that suddenly will make the stock gap up or gap down and it comes very sudden right like for example google the other day they messed up their advertising you know their ai was not giving the right answer and all of a sudden the market took it as a very very negative thing and then they started to sell the heck out of uh, google right so this is where it will go out of the expected range so as a start always trade index ETFs. In fact, most of my trades are all on the index ETFs, right? You have much more smoother ride all the way to the end. You will have much more consistent profits compared to if you were to trade stocks. So as a start, you want to trade either of this index ETFs. So if you have a pretty big account, then you can go for the larger index ETFs, which is IWM, Spiders, and QQQs. But if you have a smaller account, right, maybe you have something under $25,000, under $10,000, then I would suggest that you go for the lower price index ETFs, like the EWZ or the XLF, right? So this, at the moment uh, of recording right now, is roughly around $20 to $30, right? So it's a very good place for you to get your feet wet trading these strategies. 
Now step number two is to open up the chart and see what the stochastic oscillator is reading. So remember, I shared with you in the previous slide how to put on either a bull put spread, a bear call spread, or the iron condor, right? The other thing, in addition to that, you also want to look for support and resistance level. So this can give you an added chance of the trade working out because as we know that support levels are places where the market tends to bounce off off so for example if you have the market moving this way and then it comes back down again to test this area down here then we know that this area could be a pretty good support level so what you want to do is first see your stochastic oscillator it says oversold you identify this as a support level then your short strike for the bull push spread you want it to be ideally below this support area all right this is the short strike and then you have the long strike all right so you have a minus one plus one put all right so in this case at least there is a very uh, higher chance whereby the market if it bounces off this right and then it does go up then guess what you're going to be in profit for your bull put spread rather quickly okay so similarly, if it's overbought, look for resistance level. So resistance levels above, right? Resistance levels above, which is the previous high most of the time. So as the market goes higher, right? Make sure that the uh, stochastics oscillator is showing overbought. Then you can place your short strike again above this uh, resistance level, right? So this is a short call, and then you buy back a call above. So this way, at least the chances of the market going down would be slightly higher. Step three, place your trade according to the trade mechanics, which I shared with you in the previous slide. Just go back and watch that again. And then finally, you want to close your trades at 21 days to expiration rather than leave it to expiration, right? So there are two reasons why you want to do that. So first of all, it has been shown that, you know, if you were to close your trades at 21 days to expiration, you can see that your return is actually higher. So this is another study that has been done. You can see that if you were to close the trade early compared to if you were to leave it to uh, expiration, you can see that the results are actually better, right? Your return is much better. And the reason is because you actually uh, reduce your biggest loss, right? So most of the time, the biggest loss happens when the market has more time to move, right? So for example, if you put on a trade that is 45 days to expiration. So if you have 45 days to expiration, the chances of the market actually moving much further from where it is, is much higher compared to if there's only 21 days to move. So what you're doing is that you're kind of cutting short the lifespan of the trade so that you can control your volatility of your PL. So you can see down here, based on a $10 wide kind of a put spread, you can see that the average loss is minus 398 if you hold to expiration and it's only 121 if you if you close the trade at 21 days to expiration. Similarly, $5 wide, you can see $77 if you were to close it early, the, the average loss, compared to if you were to close at expiration, is minus 285. So that's the first reason. Now, the second reason is so that you do not have the issue of being exercised, right? So let's say, for example, you put on the bull put spread, all right? So let's say, for example, you saw that there's a support down here, the stochastics is oversold. So you place your bull put spread down here. So this is the short strike, minus one, and then plus one. So the big problem that a lot of uh, people face, or rather uh, the confusion that people get or the worry that they get is what if the stock actually goes all the way down past your short strike. So this is where you have a chance of getting assigned early on this option, right? So basically, if you're assigned on the short put, as we have learned in part one, you would be long 100 shares of the underlying stock, right? And I'm sure you do not want that, right? You do not want to get into all this hassle. So what is the best way for you to prevent this? Right? If you were to hold this trade all the way to expiration, especially if your this trade goes really deep in the money, that means the stock goes well below your bull put spread, then there's a very high chance for you to get exercise before expiration. Right? So if that's going to happen, then it's going to be very messy to, to clear out the whole position. So a better way would be to close out early where there's 21 days to expiration. And that's because there's still quite a bit of extrinsic value left in the options. So remember, we have learned that there is always extrinsic value in the options as long as it has not expired, right? No matter how little it is. So when is it the time when you will have the higher chance of getting assigned early? When is it that when the buyer of the put option will want to uh, exercise their option? 
right? This only comes when there is very little extrinsic value left in the options. So when you hold it all the way to expiration, that's the time where the extrinsic value is going to get very little and that's when the buyer of the short put down here is going to want to exercise the options and that's where you're going to get 100 shares. But if you were to close out at 21 days to expiration, then the extrinsic value is actually still going to be pretty high because there's still 21 days to go. There's still quite a lot of time left. So the chances of you actually getting exercise at 21 days to expiration is very low, right? In fact, so far, it has not happened for me at all. It's very, very low chance, right? So that is the reason why you want to close out as well during 21 days to expiration. Not only does it reduce your average loss, it also gives you a higher annual return. At the same time, you do not have this whole mess of getting assigned early. So as you can see down here, this is the study that has been done right since a long time ago, since about 2005. And then you can see that if you were to manage this iron condor at 21 days to expiration, that means whenever you put on the trade, as long as it reaches 21 days to expiration, you just get out regardless whether it's a win or loss. You can see that over time, it is very much more profitable than if you were to hold to expiration. The next question you might have would be, Davis, what about managing my trades, right? What about managing it? Should I roll it? Should I add more other stuff onto it? Like, for example, if I have a short put spread, if it goes down, should I maybe add another uh, bear call spread or something like that? At the start, let's keep it very simple, right? You do not need to do all that just to be profitable. I can tell you that for sure because most of my trades, I don't really do any of these adjustments. Most of my trades, I just close out at 21 days to expiration, also mainly because I have a lot of trades going on. So it'd be very hard for me to adjust all the different trades. So I rather, you know, make it very simple. I get out at 21 days to expiration. And for a start, I want you to try that as well. So once you get more familiar with options, you, you know how to roll and you also you have more experience trading market, then that's where you can start to experiment different kinds of adjustments. But for now, as your first few trades, especially if you're new, just close it at 21 days to expiration. All right, the last step is to rinse and repeat. All right, so here's a few examples. So here's the bull put spread. So again, remember, first thing we want to look at is the stochastics. If it's oversold, then we will start to look for support areas. So you can see I've drawn a support line down here. So once you have drawn the support line down here, next is to look at the option chain to see, you know, where you can place the short strike of your short put spread, right? So remember, we want it below this support level. So you will go to the option chain and take a look at 15 to 30 deltas, right? 15 to 30 deltas. You can see this is the delta column. So you can see the one that is just below 162 is roughly uh, at 160, right? The 160 strike price has a delta of 19, which fits the criteria of 15 to 30. So if you were to put up this spread, right, and then you just put a five point wide uh, spread, then you can get this spread for 72 cents, which is $72. Or if you want to be a little bit more aggressive, you want to get a little bit more premium, then you also can go for the 162 strike, right? At this point, it is 22 deltas, which is also within our 15 to 30 deltas. And then you can put on this trade as well. Next is the bear call spread. So the bear call spread is simply just the opposite, right? So basically we look out for the stochastic first to see whether is it overbought, oversold. So if it's overbought right now, okay, then the next thing we want to do is take a look at the resistance levels. So again, we see the previous high down here. So we we'll draw a line down here. Over here as well, you can draw another line. This is the next resistance level. So generally, the one that has a higher or a stronger resistance level would be this because as you can see before that there really isn't any other resistance level so in a sense this is like the peak of the previous resistance level this is more of the intermediate uh, resistance level but both are also fine as well because remember we are playing with probability here the bear call spread by itself already has a probability of roughly 70 percent win rate and above right so all these are additional icing on the cake to try and increase the chances of the trade working out in your favor, right? So once you have uh, identified the previous resistance levels, then the next thing is to go ahead and look at the option chain and again look at which is the strike that is above this. So you can see anywhere above 411 are possible candidates. So you can see the ones that you could choose would be maybe 415. All right, 415 will be somewhere down here. So this is where your short strike is. And then if you were to look at the option chain, 
you will see that total you can get this for one dollar and forty four cents which is not bad which is pretty good right so if you're a little bit more conservative right you may want to go for the 420 strike price the short strike at 420 and then five points away would be your long call strike right so for this you can get a dollar 11 cents for this next would be the iron condor so remember for the iron condor you just make sure that the stochastics is not overbought or oversold now remember this is just a guideline doesn't mean that if the market is oversold you cannot put on the iron condor or if it's overbought you cannot put on iron condor you can as well but because you have three strategies going on you can actually complement them with each other right so when it's not oversold or overbought you can put on the iron condor when it becomes oversold then you can put on the bull put spread or if it becomes overbought then you can put on the bear call spread so this way you have you know you're diversifying in terms of different strategies so in this case you can see that you know this is not overbought not oversold so you put on the iron condor so at the end of the day you can see that the iron condor again if you were to get out around 21 days it will be a profit or if you hold on to expiration it will be a profit as well all right guys i hope you like this video if you do please give me a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel as well so i can create more videos like this for you in the future and also if you haven't already gotten your free copy of the options income blueprint you can go ahead to options with davis.com blueprint so this options income blueprint i basically compile the top three option strategies that can help you generate a consistent income right trading just one to two hours a day or even just a few hours a week right so just go ahead to get this blueprint i have a lot of uh packed with a lot of information that you can take your time to read so if this is what you want again it's free of charge just go ahead to options with davis.com slash blueprint all right guys last but not least thank you for watching i appreciate your time and may the options favor you